Hey guys, thanks for joining me. I'm assuming you're here because you're a PowerDirector user like me, and you may have had some struggles in the past with completely controlling your panning and zooming. Well, I was sitting here working on this project that I've got some content from back in 2016, long before I thought about using it for a YouTube video. And because of the limitations of the content that I have to work with, I find myself using, in this case, a lot of still shots far more than I normally would. And I want them to look more dynamic and, and have some motion rather than just be a static slideshow. Uh, but the same thing goes for, um, as far as controlling, panning, and zooming, goes for working with video. So in this case, uh, the, the techniques I'm going to show you actually work the same whether you're doing video or with stills. I um, also want to give a quick shout out to my, my buddy Malik at Power Director University. If you haven't checked out his channel, I did pick up some good tips from him on this particular topic, so I highly recommend that. Um, but uh, getting back to my little quick summary here, um, you can see I've got, a, I've got a still shot in here that doesn't quite fill the dimensions of my 16 by 9 project. So I want to, first of all, get rid of these black bars on the side. So I need to, uh, to zoom in to do that. So I'm going to double click on the picture, uh, on the timeline, and it brings up my picture-in-picture -picture designer. Now one of the first things that, that uh, I used to run into is that when I start um, pulling these handles out to get rid of the, the bars on the side, and this is what I was doing previously, and still what I do now, but you notice I can no longer see the whole thing in frame and uh, I need to kind of scroll up and down. It's a little un, uh, unwieldy and awkward to work with. So I found out we have these zoom in, zoom out buttons that allow me to see clearly in the, the dashed line now what's going to show up in the final frame. So this is super helpful. Also, I would recommend uh, turning on the grid lines. I prefer the 3x3 three three grid lines just because of the rule of thirds and framing shots and things like that. Uh, Malik also talks about turning on the TV safe zone grid. Um, I don't find that to be especially helpful, so I'll leave that particular thing off. Your preferences may be different, um, but so feel free to, to use them if you like. But essentially, um, once, uh, let me get back out here, let me show you something else, but no changes made on that. Um, but I do want to point out, I've got my beat markers in here so that uh, I am doing my scene changes in line with the music. Now that's not the topic here, but if you are going to be doing panning and zooming, you probably want to be able to control the speed that that happens. So it's important that you set the duration of the clip you're going to edit before you do any changes to the panning and zooming because the length of the clip will affect the, the pace of the zooming or panning. So make sure you've set the duration that you want first and then double click and go into the uh, picture and picture designer to make your changes. Now, once we're here, the first thing I want to do is hit the stop button on the preview to make sure that my playhead is all the way to the left. Once I've done that, I'm going to zoom out so that I can get a really clear view of what's in frame and what's not. So the first thing I want to do to get rid of the black lines, just pull the handles out left and right. And then I can decide, do I, do I want to go up or down? Um, I think I want to include, in this particular case, um, all of the bottom. So I'm going to move it up. And you can do fine, fine adjustments in position here by using the right, left, and up and down arrow keys, by the way. Uh, so that was a handy tip I picked up from Malik. Um, so you can see this is what's currently in my shot right now. And in fact, I think I changed my mind. I think I'm going to pull that more or less in the center. All right. And then I'm going to set my keyframe. So this is where I want it to start on position and scale. It's important to do both of them. Now, in my case, uh, I'm just going to make a linear motion one, one direction or the other. So I'm going to move the playhead all the way to the right. And how I want to, uh, to move this, let's say I, I want to kind of start to zoom in uh, a little to the left and maybe... Uh, a little bit up. So I'm going to pull this one in the opposite direction of where I want to move down just a little bit. Now keep in mind a little goes a long way, especially in a short clip. I'm only about four seconds. So if I pull this all the way up, it's going to be a pretty rapid motion. So you do want to control that um, and, and understand that a, a little goes a long way. So when I release that, um, you can just barely make out. I've got two little red keyframes that have popped up down here. So it has pulled the shot slightly up and to the left since I pulled it down and to the right. 
if that makes sense. Now you can also use some other tools over here on the right, on the left hand side. You can uh, control these all, all of these parameters here uh, manually, one step at a time. The ease in and ease out are kind of cool, especially if you're going to do something a little more, more rapid. Um, you may want to ease into that rapid panning uh, so it doesn't just uh, flip on and flip off like a switch and you can so you can ease in and ease out of that. In my particular case I'm not going to use those functions I'm going to leave them as they are and that's really what I wanted out of that shot. So I'm going to click OK and uh, put the playhead back at the beginning of that clip. There we go. Right now we can see how it moves. We could have done this in the preview window uh, of the picture in picture designer as well obviously but you can see it kind of moves up and to the right, right, and then I can go on to the next one. So uh, that's basically it. Just understand that the, the same basic process works for video clip as well as it does for stills. Um, and I hope you find it helpful. Give us a thumbs up if you did. If you like outdoor videos, consider subscribing and sticking around. We'd love to have you as a subscriber. Thanks very much. Have a great day, and we'll see you in the next one.